<laughs> I hate to sound like a scrub, but are we recording? <laughs> yeah, we are. Okay. <laughs> but no, that's that's the great thing about recording is I can just edit this out later. Awesome. <laughs> uh, or keep it in. <laughs> yeah. That, that might be fun. We'll see how it goes. <laughs> yeah. Welcome to this week's edition of New Podcast Plus. We are Culture of Gaming's Nintendo podcast. We're changing up the format a little bit this week. We're going to take a look at a couple of writers here at Culture of Gaming and see what they're writing about Nintendo this week. First off is Mike Negrelli. Mike took a look at the advantages of going with the Switch version of Dragon Quest XI over the PC and PS4 versions. Let's take a listen. So have you played... Dragon Quest Eleven before? Uh, I have not actually. I um, I've been uh, waiting. Okay. Because if you read some of my articles, like you see that I um, I'm of the type of gamer that likes to wait for games to go on sale before I I, I don't buy yeah. really new games. Notice that. <laughs> <laughs> so are you a big Dragon Quest fan then? I've actually never played a Dragon Quest game before in my life. Nice. <laughs> <laughs> it's so strange because, like, we live in this age now where there's such thing as like short RPGs. Right. It used to be it used to be that uh, RPG only came in one flavor, and it's just like it has to be long and it has to be uh, medieval. Yeah. But it's like, not, there's so many it's different not kinds now. Forty hours. How can you even say it's an RPG? Exactly. <laughs> We don't live in that type of world anymore where we, like, have that time. Like, or, I mean, I don't anyway, because I'm not a kid anymore. Right. <laughs> like, there's this one uh, JRPG that I played for Switch a couple months back that actually wasn't very good, but it's pretty much just, like, pressing A the whole time to go through the whole story because the battles are just too easy and money is completely pointless because even if you buy the strongest weapon in the store uh, just when you're exploring out in the world you'll find better weapons that way <laughs> yeah um, that's that seems to be a trope yeah yeah so it's, it's called the the longest five minutes and essentially what the story is you start out at the final boss battle and you're waking up from getting hit in the head or something and you have amnesia and you can't remember what happened and the whole point of the game is you're going back and trying to remember everything that happened <laughs> leading up to that and you play all those battles it, it's an interesting concept but it's just a really boring game um, yeah but, i mean like you got like different kinds of rpgs that like are even short you know mm -hmm. um like what was that game a while back a uh, golf story Oh, that was yeah. that was weird. Mm -hmm. I mean, it's you you just live in this world where like everybody's obsessed with golf. It's kind of like the <laughs> uh, the Pokemon trading card game video game where like you live in the you live in this world where everybody play, plays a uh, Pokemon trading card game. Yeah, I never really thought of it that way as being too weird when I was younger playing it on Game Boy. But yeah, that is kind of strange world to be in or would be. But at the same time, like we mentioned earlier, it's um it's it's a much shorter game right one of the biggest ones recently is undertale uh delta rune isn't even complete yet so yeah. you can just complete that uh first chapter in like Jeez. i don't even know how long yeah I, I played like the first hour of that when it came out on halloween on pc and then i just <laughs> forgot about it but it's on switch now so i'll probably end up playing it so yeah this article that we're talking about here um, you're talking about just the the Switch version of Dragon Quest XI, which is known as, let's see if I can get this from memory, uh, Dragon Quest XI S, uh, is it Memories of an Elusive Age Definitive Edition? I, or is I don't it? believe so. Echoes. I, uh, echoes of echoes, an Elusive yeah. Age. That's what it is. And then it's Definitive echoes. Edition. So it's like DES... E O A uh, who knows <laughs> and sometimes why yeah why not but yeah that's it's the only title that beats out new super mario bros u deluxe for longest title on the switch 
So. Oh man, there, there's got to be a longer t- uh, longer oh, title than that. I don't sure know. There is, but <laughs> who's gonna take the time to look into that? No. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, starting out at the beginning of the article, he said that this is horrible news. But what what exactly about it is horrible, and why is it horrible? Well, at the start of my article, I was I was kind of being a little uh, facetious. I was kind sure. of, uh, I mean, like, but the thing is, people really are upset, and I get why they're upset. If you've supported a franchise and you just want to get it immediately, and you want to show your love and support for a specific franchise like Dragon Quest, I completely understand how you might feel a little, a little betrayed. How not long after it comes out. It actually came out a while ago. It doesn't feel like a long time ago, but it did. Was it last um, fall? I think it came out like wasn't it 2017? Uh, could have sworn it was. Uh, let's see. So it looks like it came out on PC and PS4. Oh, okay, summer of wow. Yeah, it was a while back. Summer of 2017. Huh. Wow. So yeah, yeah. July 29th. <laughs> I mean, huh. even that right there. I mean, like, it's been a long time. Yeah. And what you get for paying full price for a game day one it drops is you get the privilege of playing it right away. Right. It's horrible news because people don't get to have the same features as the people who either waited or didn't have a PS4 or PC. But they got to play it first. Huh. <laughs> so I don't see... I mean, I do see why they're upset, but at a certain point, I I just think that they kind of have to get over it a little bit. But the main (laughs) thing that I wanted to say with my article is just that that's the uh, the risk you take when you get a game immediately. The very next week, the newest Tomb Raider game could... uh, what happened with that again? I think like it it went down like half price or something like that. Something like, like that, yeah. Like almost immediately. Or like with uh, Fallout seventy six, where it came out in early November, and then by Black Friday, a couple of weeks later, it was something. It was like forty or maybe even half price. So besides just waiting for a game because of the difference in content or updates, you also talked about uh, where the system will or where the game will run better watch system so obviously the game came out switch pc ps4 and 3ds and mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah it's pretty safe to say it probably doesn't run best on 3ds probably um, not in fact <laughs> the addition of adding the 16-bit characters uh, or adding the, the 16-bit play style that wasn't even really much of an addition so much as that already existed in the 3DS version. They're just porting right. it over to the to the Switch. Mm-hmm. Yeah, and if anything, that would probably help the Switch version compared to the PS4 and PC versions. But the, the weird thing is that I've noticed with the Switch is that if there are games, it, it's mostly been indie games, but if there are games that are on Switch and PC, I typically go with the Switch version just because of the portability and it's nice to be able to just lay down on the couch and play a game. Yeah, or like right before bed. Yeah, exactly. Um, Even though I am actually a big fan of games that look pretty, which is why I used to buy a majority of my games on PC. Uh, Mm -hmm. But yeah, we haven't really been able to see where it runs better so far because nobody's really done in-depth analysis with the Switch version since nobody has it yet. But it definitely didn't look like it was struggling much with the Switch version. Yeah, which kind of surprised me. And if there is any problem with the Switch version, like, for example, with uh, Trials Fusion... Oh, yeah. uh, all the, all they did was just add some some mist in the background, and that <laughs> kind of fixed it. Yeah, I'm sure they'll do little things like that where they'll reduce the draw distance, and the, there may be some more pop-ins in this version than PS4 or PC. But 
it's not like this that Dragon Quest is the most graphically intensive game. It still has an art style that's almost cell shaded, just a bit kind of yeah above Akira that. Toriyama, right? Right, yeah. But it still still looks much better than not that cell shaded is bad, but it looks at least more detailed than cell shading. Oh, absolutely. Uh, but. I don't think that the Switch is going to have any problem with it, mainly because <laughs> I've I've already seen like, for example, at the latest Nintendo Direct, they they showed the newest uh, remake of Link's Awakening, yep. and that looks like that looks like it's like pushing hardware. Yeah, it's like a little toy box. It's so cute though. <laughs> Absolutely. I I don't think that Dragon Quest is going to have uh, it's going to have any problem running on the Switch. Yeah. So the kind of the biggest question I think right at the end here that the article asks is about how long this could last those all those exclusive switch features in this version of Dragon Quest so do you think that they would come out in a free update or paid DLC or maybe even completely re-release the game for the other consoles I wouldn't really be surprised if they charged for everything. I really wouldn't. Okay. But there's really no way to know right now. And right. anything that anything that I would say would be a guess, which is why it's in an, an, an opinion piece and not in a, a news article from Culture of Gaming. Right. I really do think that um, it is possible that they could charge us for this, but I think it's still worth it. Mm-hmm. Nintendo has seems to have a habit of charging sixty dollars or at least full price for things that maybe shouldn't. Yeah. <laughs> um, I think I, I also wrote an article um, about how, um, or an opinion piece about how mm-hmm. I think that uh, Link's Awakening is probably going to be full price, and as a Game Boy, as a former Game Boy game, yeah, I don't know if I would purchase it at you know, sixty dollars. Mm-hmm. But in this case, in in uh, Dragon Quest case, I think that you're getting a huge RPG. You're getting all these extra stories of you know all all the people in your party. You're getting English and Japanese voice acting in case you get bored of the two. Yep. Or or one of the or one of the other. But the music, as far as the music goes, it's only two pieces that are actually getting fully orchestrated. I think right. it's just like. I think it's the battle theme and the overworld theme, which, from what I've heard, those are the two songs that you hear the most often anyway. But, But like, say you're having a cutscene in a town or something like that, or in Mm -hmm. a a place that you visit, then you're not going to even notice because there's been no change. Right. If anything, with the updates, I feel like if they do charge, there should be at least some other updates that are free like the music maybe the 16-bit mode but... uh, all the characters um or all the characters in your party get uh their own uh, added uh missions i think okay yeah i could see maybe things like missions being extra missions being paid dlc and then other just kind of aesthetic things like the music and the graphics being free dlc but mm-hmm. not not based on anything from the past, but it makes more sense to charge people for extra gameplay content versus just looking or sounding different. Yeah. But that's just me. And while I do think that they are probably going to end up charging us for, like, if you want to play it on PC or on PS4 or anything like that, mm-hmm. I really do think that there is a chance that it could all be free you know it doesn't necessarily have to or some of it could be free some of it could be charged yeah like um i remember when uh, persona 5 came out the uh, japanese voice acting was not available but when it came out when they finally released the japanese voice acting for for english players they didn't charge you for it it was right. all free and so, i think uh, i think it very well could happen that way uh, square enix could do that for this too yeah i'd hope so I, I haven't heard the English voice acting, but of course the Japanese voice acting is usually better. Mm-hmm. But then again, it is Square Enix, so I don't, I don't know. 
I really, uh, I mean, I know I'm not the first person to say it, but I really do hope that they come out with a Majora's Mask type sequel where they just use the assets from Breath of the Wild to make something completely off the wall insane. Mm -hmm. Maybe that's what uh, Link's Awakening is holding us over for until uh, 2020 or 20. I need to watch the trailer a few more times. Uh, I've, I've really only watched it once, and from that initial look, I thought it, it, it looked fine. Um, mm -hmm. I'd have to look more at the detail of all the different settings that they showed. So, yeah. where can people find you and your work? Well, of course, you can always uh, find us at cultureofgaming.com. Omar, what's that website called? cultureofgaming.com that's right i also have a uh, twitter and a youtube channel called game old game old i uh write about my thoughts about basically how games affected me i talked about like how like oh this is the game that i played when i was this part in my life and that's that's <laughs> why i like this game that kind of thing nice i like that all right well you have a great weekend all Thanks right see you up. next time yep. bye Next up is JT. Uh, he takes a look in this article at the possibility of a partnership between Nintendo and Sony. Obviously, we've heard a lot of rumors about Microsoft possibly partnering up with Nintendo, um, but JT here takes a little different angle and looks how the other side of the console wars could team up with Team Red. So let's dig around his mind for a couple minutes here. Thanks for coming on. Ah, no problem. It was a long, arduous journey, but I'm here. All right. Yeah. <laughs> a long drive here. <laughs> <laughs> All the way to your computer. Yeah, you don't know how long it took me to reach that button. Oh, you gotta get up out of bed. Uh, yeah, you gotta put your pants on one leg at a time. <laughs> I mean, we're <laughs> not on camera, so. Oh, not really. okay. That changes everything. <laughs> so, JT, for the people who aren't familiar with who you are, uh, what do you do here at Culture of Gaming? Culture of Gaming? I do uh, video game reviews, editorials, uh, write my own opinions, and I straight up don't care what people think. I <laughs> will voice my opinions how I see fit. You know, like freedom of speech, you know, and all that. So, oh, yeah. yeah, that's good. Yeah, it's we need people like that. Tough. Yeah, I mean, like you know, if a video game's like bad or whatever, right? You know, if it's mm -hmm. terrible, uh, I I'll give it my honest opinion. You know, I'll straight up like be like, oh yeah, no, that's a two or a three. You know, <laughs> I mean, <laughs> it's it's good for the developer because then they can improve later on yeah. future games. All uh, right, so obviously we're going to be talking here about a partnership between Nintendo and Sony, what that would look like. Before we get into that, what are your thoughts on how Microsoft and Nintendo are currently working together for uh, what they've already done? And then what do you think about what's rumored uh, that's coming to the Switch with Game Pass and xCloud? Let's see. So, let's see. Well, what's what's rumored? Like, I didn't really, like, dig too deep into that one. Okay, uh -huh. so what's rumored is that uh, it's the two big parts. First, that um, game streaming, Xbox games, will come yeah. to the it, Switch. It would be like the Xbox Game Pass on the Switch, right? Right, except it'll yeah. be the streaming portion that they're working on just because obviously the Switch isn't going to be able to play stuff like yeah. Forza or whatever else is on yeah. Xbox. <laughs> I mean, it might... It might. <laughs> You know, it's, I mean, the Switch is actually a, is it's not too bad, like yeah. on the spec side of things. You know, mm -hmm. it's it's actually a huge, like I would say it's a pretty big step up. Yeah. Uh, there, in terms of hardware from the Wii U. Yeah, for sure. And there, there's some of those exclusives though on the Xbox One that they didn't mm -hmm. really have to knock down to get them onto the Switch, which makes streaming make more sense. Um, yeah. But then the other big part of it is the rumor that Microsoft will start uh, publishing games for the Switch. So 
things that were formerly exclusive like Ori in the Blind Forest or uh, Cuphead, kind of like those lower power uh, requirement games, uh, yeah. which makes sense for the Switch. Like it would make sense from a business uh, point of view, like to have like. A few of the lower, like I would say, indie titles uh, right. on the Switch, like ported from uh, from Xbox or whatnot, mm-hmm. uh, or even some of those studios under the uh, or under the Microsoft brand, um, sort of just you know just like kind of shuff, shuffling along little by little over to the Switch. Yeah, um, like like that would be like good, you know, considering like uh, Microsoft gets a huge cut, but then at the same time it's like. You know, it's another platform, right? And people who mm-hmm. pick up the Switch probably never will never dream about picking up the Xbox One. Right. It works out. Yeah, I actually have an article in the works right now about that, how this could possibly be Xbox's way to get into Japan. Obviously, they're not going to be selling consoles yeah. like crazy because they've mm-hmm. only sold i don't think they've even sold like a hundred thousand xbox ones in japan over its whole life no, no um, it, it is horrible it's uh, I'm, I'm gonna say it's more or less aesthetics when you look at it right like every iteration of the xbox is just a giant box <laughs> it's, it's literally a box <laughs> well, they're not lying to you about what it is at least yeah no, not lying. <laughs> it's a box <laughs> yeah but then, like, when you see, like, every iteration of the PlayStation, you know, what is it? Oh, it's sleek. It's sexy. You know, it's, like, right. it's flat. Like, it was, um, like, the original PS1, you know, like, uh, even though it did have that, like, boxy, like, look to it, it mm-hmm. still, like, looked pretty, like, really good. You know, it was, like, mm-hmm. it was, uh, it was definitely half the size of the original Xbox. Let's get into the playstation discussion Mm. on our nintendo podcast Uh, so the first thing that you touched on here was kind of like the difference between uh, using the discs and the cartridges that nintendo uses now so there was one thing you notice here that just you said they're cheaper to produce i know right now sandisk is going to be releasing sometime this year a one terabyte micro sd Course, yeah, I though that's I... for like four hundred fifty dollars. <laughs> yeah, yeah, I think I like placed that somewhere. I might have placed it in there, or I might okay. have skipped it. Okay, yeah, uh, um, yeah, but, but yeah, obviously that's a lot more expensive. Still, the physical media on the cartridges is going to be a lot more expensive to produce right now, um, and yeah. for a portable console, it makes more sense. But if if they ever go back to disc, then yeah, it would definitely make sense for them to join up with Sony mm-hmm. and get some kind of deal going there. Yeah, because like even I say, I want to say now, 2019's prices are like in line with each other, like from both disc and cartridges. Like I would say, like they're closely in line with each other now than they were like 10 years ago. You know? Yeah, for sure. Yeah, and then like uh, you have um, the disc, right, which could hold a huge amount of information. Mm-hmm. Um, I forget exactly what the numbers were, but yeah, I, and then cartridges now are keeping up with that, with those numbers, with disc numbers, you know, because you got Blu-rays, yep. which I don't even think the Wii, uh, oh no, wait, yeah, I don't think the Wii U had a blue, Blu-ray. It was, Um, yeah, it was something similar, but it wasn't Blu-ray. It was, like, similar size, and I guess Mm. the way it it was layered was similar to Blu-ray, but it wasn't exactly Blu-ray. Yeah, but, like, uh, but then, like, you got, um, you also got load times, too, which the cartridges I've actually found, like, blow, like, they actually blow, you know, discs out of the water when it comes to, like, load times. Yeah, that's for sure. Yeah. Yeah, but as for price now, it's like it they're nearly comparable, like between discs and uh, cartridges. Mm-hmm. And I mean, um, if they're going the way that uh, the gaming industry is going right now, we might even have to worry about physical media. It's all just going to be downloads or streaming. Uh, say that by itself is really far off, because not sure. only do you have the uh, the collector side of things, who you know they. They will buy up any physical copies, you know, it's true. over 
yeah, like over uh, digital media. We also talked here about Sony possibly uh, publishing games on the Switch, like you specifically mentioned, The Last of Us. So what, what other games do you think would be able to get on there besides Last of Us? Horizon Zero Dawn, like, would be a good port be- just because, like, I want to say it's kind of got that open world feel, like, uh, like how most Elder Scrolls games yeah. feel. Definitely, uh, God of God of War would be like, I wouldn't say the new God of War. I would definitely say the hmm. old God of War series, like, oh, yeah. like all the rest of the games. Yeah, that would make sense. Would, like, I would say, like, just you know, make all the older games available all the older like ps1 and ps2 games available on the switch you know Mm. just like license them out to to nintendo right and then that would make sense just have nintendo be this hub of all these retro games you know and everybody (laughs) would literally be happy everybody's pockets would be happy except people buying the games (laughs) right (laughs) well i mean like you know, on the PS3, you had a like you were able to download all these PS1 and PS2 classics. Mm-hmm. Um, and then same with the 360. You know, download you can play like whatever X ex- regular Xbox games yeah. you may have, or most games. You know, just use the Switch as a hub for the Xbox, or I would say the regular Xbox games and the PS1 and PS2 games. You yeah. know, and like because it could handle it you know just oh yeah absolutely yeah just be like hey yeah we we, we kind of messed up on the playstation classic uh here you go <laughs> <laughs> well yeah that would actually be a pretty good idea just because mm-hmm. nintendo has had much better success with creating emulators for classic games i'm sure they could probably do a good job with creating better emulators for playstation games yeah, I personally, personally, I would put all my eggs, you know, with uh, with Nintendo on that one. They yeah. they would definitely have uh, the better end of the uh, retro market perspective, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, uh, we kind mm-hmm. of talked about game streaming with Xbox a little bit. What do you think about other higher? Uh, requirement games like God of War, the original. Or, sorry, not the original, but the uh, re- most yeah. recent God of War. Like our um, what is uh, Last called, Guardian uh, being God like a of... streaming option on PS Now for the Switch as a streaming option yeah. for God of War, yeah, like or just any uh, of the higher requirement <clears throat> games that are on the PS4 um, right now. Huh. Like I would say yes, like maybe. Okay. But I don't. I don't know if like honestly, like I don't even know if it'd be able to ha- really handle uh, hmm. uh that many um xbox one games you know like exclusive right. games um yeah that is true i guess <clears throat> the point we're at right now maybe yeah. isn't great for it's streaming good. yeah because but... like okay so like i understand yeah. like you know like uh like the um like the racing games and whatnot you know sports mm-hmm. games you know s- stuff that's not too hardware intensive sure. but then you have the ps4 uh, which is like okay, so let's say God of War, right? Yeah. That one came out strictly on the PS4. Spider Man, PS4 <laughs> exclusive, you know? Right. Uh, I would love to see Horizon Zero Dawn, but even that, like, I'm just like, uh, like, <laughs> I mean, I would love to see that though on the Switch, <laughs> to be yeah. honest. I was just gonna say, and uh, what you were saying here about the more mature games on the PlayStation, that definitely makes sense for nintendo just because they don't have a lot mm-hmm. of that but at the same time it also fits well with kind of the more mature um marketing campaign that they've yeah. been going with where it's all like older people playing the switch and all the commercials whereas like the wii u it was all like these children yeah like de- definitely like if you do have like a streaming service like that like uh, I would put, I would definitely put like a warning out there, you know, like for like parent, like you know, like as soon as you open mm. up the game or whatever, I'd be like, oh yeah, this is you know, this is intended for like mature audiences, you know. Right. Uh, I want to say like quite a few parents, you know, would actively have the system, the console, yeah. be the parent for them, you know. So it's mm-hmm. like, oh, you know, I got a thirteen-year-old kid. Let's 
you know, yeah, have at it, right? You got <laughs> this whole library of games. You know, I paid for this subscription to, you know, for you to stream games on your uh, on your Switch. Mm-hmm. Uh, go for it, you know. <laughs> Yeah. It's like I'm gonna be at work. Here's your entertainment, you know. Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I mean the nice thing is too the Switch actually already has um, parental <laughs> controls uh, through a, f- a mobile app, so yeah. you can like set already the max, uh, I guess the max, I guess age rating for yeah. the, uh, games that can be played on a specific console. Uh, I actually use it on my own Switch just to keep track of my hours uh, played because the console doesn't really have uh, a way to track it it's just kind of like an estimate that they show uh, on there okay yeah that does make sense yeah the only thing that would be uh, confusing with that if it's like a separate app that they have to go through for streaming and then you don't it's not like uh, oh yeah what if it's all, mo- <laughs> it, all on your phone like it's like oh shit yeah. <laughs> all right that- all right, how am I gonna do this? Right, uh, I, I gotta stream. Okay, time to turn on my mobile app. <laughs> it's like it's like if you're trying to watch Hulu on the Switch, it's not gonna block something that's like a rated R movie on yeah. Hulu just because it's they technically I think Hulu is rated E for everyone or something. <laughs> I, I, don't, I don't know if it actually has any SRB mm-hmm. rating, but um, no, yeah, it's kind of a loophole that might exist then in game streaming if it yeah. works in a similar way to like hulu or netflix you also mentioned something another game that kind of would be interesting to me because you mentioned super mario rpg <laughs> that just kind of got me thinking like what if they made a super mario rpg kind of like crossover with sony characters and like yeah. throw mario and kratos and aloy and nathan drake together in an rpg <laughs> and Right. Like, uh, yeah, like uh, with that RPG, like, um, uh, let's see. So I would say, let's see. So I would say, yeah, like, uh, like Square Enix, like because it is like, major, uh, like a majority of their games seem to be like on a, or they used to be on like the Sony platform, right? Yeah. Like, uh, was it? I want to say like you know like the Final Fantasies, like the old older final fantasies and stuff like that mm-hmm. I-, I would love to see like another like final fantasy um crossover yeah like ma- maybe like with kratos like maybe with like the god of war uh, uh characters um mm-hmm. and then you just throw i don't know forget a measure just like randomly throw out solid snake and stuff yeah. Uh- <laughs> I was kind of um, thinking it would make more sense as an RPG just because you're not going to want to go with the fighting games since Nintendo <clears throat> kind of already owns the ultimate uh, fighting crossover. Yeah, but... Mm, yeah, like Kingdom Hearts. Yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. That's, that's a thing. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, that's a thing. Uh, Nino Kuni, definitely. Hmm. Summon Knight. I'm literally just looking at my wall of games right now. <laughs> <laughs> Cat Quest. Yeah. Oh. I mean, Square Enix has had a pretty good uh, recent history with Nintendo with um, yeah. exclusive mm-hmm. games like the uh, Bravely Default and Bravely Second, uh, Octopath Traveler, and then, of course, releasing all those Final Fantasy games onto the Switch. Yeah. It's just they've they've been getting along much better than they have since. I mean, they haven't been getting along great yeah. since N sixty four, really. But like, yeah, like because of um, I definitely think that like it would be a much better relationship like between Square Enix, right? Mm-hmm. And Nintendo because you know of that, like you know, it's like oh, you come back and it's like <laughs> oh yeah yeah like oh I'm you know like oh yeah let's make up our differences now it's yeah. like yeah we're sorry you know the other side <laughs> oh yeah we're sorry too you know, oh i was just gonna say like yeah like if they make an rpg together like you know yeah. that an- another one that would be cool yeah i was just gonna say i kind of feel mm-hmm. like cloud and smash brothers was that first step of them getting back together yeah yeah <laughs> somewhat somewhat yeah, yeah. De- i would say definitely sony would like bridge that gap like between nintendo and square enix like it's because like square enix and nintendo like they're still like best buds they're still like best friends so yeah 
uh, partnership, I think, would be hugely beneficial for for another Super Mario RPG uh, like game. You know, maybe not mm-hmm. that game in particular, but sure. there's potential because you know they they have a lot of characters to work with. Mm-hmm. If Sony, let's say, doesn't do so well and they kind of find themselves in the spot that Microsoft's in right now, what would you want to see Sony bring to Nintendo to kind of maybe make up some of the lost money uh, from PS5 to games, hardware, different technology? Uh, What would you want to see them bring to Nintendo to kind of make up for lost time? Like, what do you mean? Like, if the PS5 weren't to do so well? Right, yeah. Like, if they're kind of in the same situation where Microsoft is now, where they're kind of considering bringing uh, streaming and some of their exclusive games to the Switch. I mean, there's a huge pool of remakes, you know, and uh, re-releases right now, you know, to choose from on the PS4 alone. Like, let's see, I I would say, yeah, it definitely has to be something different. So... Backwards compatibility. So yeah, you would have to find some way to implement um, s- something to do with retro, because like it's okay. You know, a lot of people like I, I see I see like more people sort of getting into like the retro field. Like yeah, I don't know. It feels like it's it's like a growing market. Surprise, like surprisingly enough, it mm-hmm. feels like it just keeps growing. You know, even like the younger people, they're like oh uh, like people who are who. Uh, who are barely like in their 20s you know or not yeah. even in their 20s right they're just picking up like all these retro like games and consoles <laughs> too and i see like somebody i know she's like 10 years younger than i am you know and what is it her favorite ga- her favorite system's the sega saturn so <laughs> <laughs> interesting and yeah exactly <laughs> definitely go with that retro market you can't okay. go wrong at this point yeah so um, what you're saying is uh Shadow of the Colossus on the Switch, right? So yeah, Shadow. Of the, <laughs> ooh, that would be actually a good game. Shadow of the Colossus. Make that and Ico like to get you know sort of mm-hmm. like what they did on the PS3. Yeah. Yep. And exactly. Currently on the PS4, yeah, just make it all bundled into one, you know. Do it all. Uh, Sh- Shinmue is a good example as well. One and two, yeah. you know, released on the PS4. Yeah, I'm kind of surprised we haven't seen more Dreamcast games on Switch. I know they had. A lot of Dreamcast games come to GameCube, but then after that, well, like on the Wii, Wii U, and Switch, there hasn't really been that much remade. Well, like, I want to say the Shinmue games, mm-hmm. like, I want to say, like, that remake is, uh, I want to say it's a direct result of the Yakuza, the current Yakuza series being, like, you know, becoming a thing, you know, becoming yeah. a, a popular game. Um, because it is basically like Yakuza, right? You take Shinmue and Yakuza, and they're virtually the same uh, formula. Like, uh, I, I don't want to say like so much in gameplay, but like how they're presented, like sure, kind of the more realistic uh, yeah. looking, uh, roaming mm. Tokyo third person type of thing. Yeah, you know, it's 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 all, but yeah, they're, they're both story driven. Yeah. Yeah, I think that's all I've got for this time. Uh, so, JT, uh, where can people find you and find your work? Uh, yes. Yeah, so, you find me uh, on Instagram at uh, cosplay underscore book, and I primarily upload uh, uh, cos like a uh, cosplay uh, model photography uh on there uh nice. you can also find me at uh on facebook as jt scout where i just where i don't really post that many photos but i am available to chat on there uh that is my primary means of uh communication um other than that yeah and thank you yeah well thank you very much for coming on yeah thanks it was it was fun yeah <laughs> <laughs> all right well you have a good week all right you too Thanks. Have a great week. Bye. Bye. Finally this week, we have Ethan Braun, who interviewed two different YouTubers that are famous in two different mediums of YouTube videos. First one being Freddy Grede, 
I'm never going to be able to pronounce that correctly. And then Game Champ 3000. All right, well, welcome, Ethan. Hello there. Hello. So, for those who are new to this podcast or new to culture of gaming in general, what do you do for the website? Oh, I, I guess my technical title is a staff writer. I wrote about everything from uh, news pieces to uh, not as much anymore, but I do a few opinion pieces around. And more recently, I've been doing a lot of interview articles, which is uh, we're just about what we're about to talk about. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, that's the stuff. <laughs> and actually, right off the bat, I have the most important question of this whole segment. What's that? And that's, is this guy's name pronounced Freddy Greddy? Or... Uh, Okay, so it's interesting. Um, Freddy Grede is the name uh, of the channel. The real name of the guy is Frederick. Um, Frederick, yeah. I, Frederick I, Larson. I interviewed, I interviewed the guy who was in charge of a channel called Freddy Grede, which is a YouTube channel solely dedicated to uh, music, music of all sorts, okay. uh, from from full on albums to uh, video game cover music, compilation remixes, whatever you want to call them, to uh, all sorts of other stuff. Um, and he's a really, really interesting guy, and I enjoyed doing an interview with him nice so yeah, I, uh, I just had the english pronunciation of it yes then. that's right basically <laughs> good old midwestern accent oh yeah freddy greddy there <laughs> <laughs> that's the stuff oh man yeah so yeah i noticed you said he had two hundred thousand subs and millions of views on multiple videos and you said that he plays all kinds of covers and everything and I think we already covered that he was from Sweden. Gail Sweden is that's probably another English pronunciation. Yes, that's right. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah, tell us about all the musical training he's had. Oh well, okay. <laughs> uh, hardly any, actually. It's interesting because he's almost entirely self-taught. Uh, he took maybe a few piano lessons when he was a kid, but since then he's kind of just taught himself through the internet about piano and guitar. And from there, he's branched out and uh, been able to use a bunch of other instruments throughout uh, many of his different, his various videos. Mm. Very nice. Yeah. yeah. I've watched a couple of those. There's that Mario one that you sent me. Um, mm -hmm. the, I think there's a superb Mario yeah, it's interesting. medley. The superb, the superb Mario medley was the first way that I kind of was led on to him in the first place. A lot of people mm. were led on him. It's one of his most popular videos, um, especially recently. Uh, but it's basically just a collection of every of a song from every single mainline Mario game from Super Mario Bros. to Super Mario Odyssey. And it's really, really, really good. My favorite part of that whole thing was that he actually uses the Labo piano as an instrument in that song. Yeah. Oh, it's, it's so incredible. good. <laughs> it's so, so good. The, did you ever figure out what that instrument was in the lower left that he was using? It just like, it looked like a tin kind of top hat that he was just pounding on top of. It seemed to me like he was using a kitchen bowl for percussion for a lot of the stuff. Um, for, okay. Yeah, but he also uh, uh, mixed that in with some standard, oh gosh, what do you call them? Not chimes, but like these uh, it's kind of doodads on a stick that they, he, he shaked together. It sounded like a tambourine. Might have used like a triangle as well or something. But hmm. Yeah, I noticed too, I was uh, watching the Wind Waker video and at some point there was uh, there were like glasses filled with water that he was... Uh, tapping on with spoons okay yeah yeah, yeah that's right <laughs> that's right so one of his older videos uh wind waker unplugged was uh, literally over a decade ago at this point mm -hmm. uh the first time that it i think to to this date now it's not quite his most popular video but it has 4.8 million views on youtube it's literally just a rendition of the uh, main theme from the legend of zelda the wind waker um and it's probably the first instance where he uses uh, multiple different instruments kind of splices them together uh, in one video and audio track and the video quality is not that great but yeah <laughs> good lord it's it's a really moving just a really moving uh i don't know iteration of the wind waker theme which is already a fantastic video game song mm -hmm. yeah he he knocked it out of the park with that one yeah 100 percent. he made two videos before that but mm -hmm. yeah i thought it was kind of interesting that he was known for all these video game and Disney movie covers and then like his first big hit on YouTube was actually um, a cover of uh, Beethoven's uh, let's see if I can pronounce this Fur Elise yeah Fur Elise, <laughs> Fur Elise on guitar uh, it, it was interesting I was talking to him um, or no actually I saw this on the FAQ of his site but uh, he the, the way that he really got 
like his very, very first uh, hit on YouTube. It's at 2.9 million views right now. Before Wind Waker Unplugged was this rendition of uh, Beethoven's Fur Elise on guitar, which he said uh, no one else had done at the time. Right. Uh, and so he thought, hey, I may as well try it. And uh, it really, really paid off. And uh, as they say, the rest is history, I guess. Absolutely. So unrelated to anything that was uh, written, I just thought it was kind of interesting, the uh, picture you included above the process subsection where he has like all this recording equipment that looks super expensive and then his, his recording studio is just like a bunch of bed sheets <laughs> yes yes that was one of his more recent images from uh, the guys were originally from sweden mm -hmm. if you can't tell based off of his uh, uh his name frederick um but he moved to the philippines he went okay 2014 or so he took a long vacation going all over the world from morocco to all nice. sorts of different places and ended up living in the philippines so uh, so he took that picture while i think while he was still looking for searching for an apartment okay so that was kind of the humor <laughs> of it yeah it's it's fun <laughs> of course if um for all the listeners if if you haven't seen any images this uh this none of this will make much sense um and we'll leave uh, we'll leave a bunch of links to uh to his actual to his channel uh in the description as well as probably a bunch of his videos that uh, we're referencing if you haven't already heard them before i'd imagine that uh a lot of people probably already oh, yeah. have a lot of our listeners. Either a subscriber if... stumbled upon them somewhere on YouTube. Oh yeah, definitely. But they're they're all worth listening to, even uh, even if you're not necessarily interested in just you know music that doesn't relate to video games. He's got some really really good stuff. He's created three albums, uh, each with like 13 songs or so. Um, so you know, hop over to his site, uh, check those albums out after you've uh, after you've seen his uh, his main video game medleys and other medleys and stuff and. Uh, you know, give the guy some, uh, throw the guy some cash, give him some, give him some support. Buy Absolutely. one of his albums. They're, they're pretty good. They're pretty good. <laughs> so I also noticed uh, just this whole process of creating just a single video seemed pretty ridiculous. I'm not sure how much this compares to other similar channels, but I just thought it was crazy. He said he spends like the first couple days just recording the first demo. And then he'll spend right. like a week to four weeks polishing, which just, I don't know, that just seems like a very long time, but I guess it yeah. makes sense, the, the quality of the product that's released in the end. Yeah, a couple of these things, the Poka Medley um, in particular, he said took him about a half a year or so. so. Wow. Yeah, some of the stuff. It's interesting because uh, with a lot of his medleys, his his hair is actually at different lengths between some of the <laughs> shots that are like right next to each other. So, you know, enough time passes between some of those that uh, he's, you know, his hair is able to grow out or he's able to get a haircut. And so, you know, long process for, for making these things. Frederick sounds like an awesome, very talented musician. Now let's transition into Game Champ 3000. So yeah, when did Game Champ three thousand start out on YouTube? Uh, so yeah, this guy, the guy Game Champ three thousand. Um, he well, okay, technically speaking, he started back way back whenever YouTube started, like two thousand six or so. But okay. I would say more recently, like really, really recently, actually twenty seventeen or so, he uploaded a video mm -hmm. called "Can You Beat Breath of the or Can You Beat Ganon Using Only a Cuckoo." Um, <laughs> And it was under the uh, series titles Hyrule Myths. And that video blew up. Got It's currently sitting at about 2.6 million views or so. Nice. Um, and ever since then, he's done these videos called uh, Video Game Myths or VG Myths for short. Um, mm. You've probably heard of a few of them before. Yeah, I have actually. Yes. Uh, his, his most famous one to date is the one titled Can You Beat Super Mario Odyssey Without Jumping? Spoiler alert, you can, but you should go watch the video because there are a lot of asterisks involved. Okay. At the end of the day, though, he proves that within the confines of the Mario Odyssey universe, based on the actual counter in-game that they give you, you can beat Mario Odyssey without jumping. Um, <laughs> so that's kind of his most famous video. He's done a bunch of other ones like Breath of the Wild without climbing, mm, uh, Mega Man yep. and Mega Man 2 without getting hit. Basically, in this article that I'm, I'm in the midst of, uh, not, it's not really an article. It's, I, I, I interviewed uh, Mr. Game Champ himself, um, and we, uh, we kind of talked about his career, uh, his history with uh, video editing, uh, his history, what, what his process is whenever he's going to uh, make a new challenge for a game. So, yeah, again, this one ought to be up on the site by the time this podcast goes up as well, I think. Nice. So what is kind of his uh, history, current, past 
future with Nintendo games? Nintendo games specifically, most of the games on his channel, he told me specifically that his goal in life is to 100% complete every single video game. But I think he generally tends to stray a lot more towards the, Nintendo and Nintendo style games. So wait, wait, hundred percent every video game, just yes. like everything that exists. Yeah, that's basically it. <laughs> it's kind of a nebulous hole, but I mean, based on based on his channel, he's certainly doing a good job of it. He's, he's played a lot of games, like a lot of games. He, All right. He, back in the day, he did just a lot of gameplay uploads, and he archived most of them. But hmm. trust me, he's played a lot of games. But no, he he generally. For the stuff on his channel specifically, they're uh, Nintendo-style games, I would say. Okay. You have Zelda, you have Mario, but you also have stuff like Splatoon, Knack, Sonic, Sly Cooper, a lot of like the old-school Sony platformers. Sure. Probably the least Nintendo thing he's done is, like, I think he did, like, a Dead Rising VG Mitz video. So, mm. and uh, one about that old game, like, before Red Dead Redemption, called Gun. Um, oh, yeah. I yeah. That game. <laughs> Never played it, though. Yeah, yeah, I would say mostly his stuff strays more towards Nintendo. So if you're interested okay. in beating Nintendo games or beating any game with weird, obscure, entirely difficult challenges, then uh, check the guy out. <laughs> yeah, I think I, the first video I saw of his was beating Super Mario 3D World without jumping. And oh, it just did all this ridiculous stuff with like picking up characters and throwing them yeah and having four controllers plugged in at the same time and controlling all of them <laughs> a lot of abusing the multiplayer functionality for sure and then um, uh, abusing the bubbles and all that oh yeah definitely notice you also said that he does a lot of streaming so is that is that pretty much just because you said for the it's for the uh vg myth series that he has on youtube do you know if he also just streams in general for fun just to make money get bigger audience he's actually said that he's been doing a lot less of that recently most of okay. most of uh, the stuff that he streams on youtube is specifically for uh, vg myths it's interesting because he has this interesting community interaction where he'll stream his attempts playing games for example doing the mario odyssey no jump run on twitch and mm. a lot of the times there will be like these weird barriers that are just he's he's banging his head up against the wall trying okay. to figure out how to do something like uh for example in the mario odyssey one he finished the game and was at about 30 jumps or so even though he couldn't remember any time that he had actually jumped <laughs> so he's banging his head up against the wall trying to kind of experiment around see what happened why there were 30 jumps on the counter and turns out talking to npcs in super mario odyssey counts as a jump which is the strangest thing you know that's a weird enough but he couldn't figure out any way to get around that because there are instances in Mario Odyssey where you have to talk to NPCs. Right. But thanks to someone in the chat, uh, someone who, who suggested just this random thing, you can avoid upping the jump counter from talking to NPCs by ground pounding directly in front of them and then talking to them. <laughs> Weird stuff like that that like he would have never figured out on his own, more than likely. But uh, because of the Twitch stream, was able to... Mm was able to get around it so interesting i wonder why that is he went into like a whole like hypothesis on why why okay. it is that what why it is that uh mario odyssey counts that but uh yeah you can't really know for sure <laughs> <laughs> oh man but i mean i guess that's a good way of at least keeping him honest so you know he's not editing anything together and just being like yeah i totally did this <laughs> <laughs> fair point yeah definitely <laughs> Um, but yeah, it also, obviously, like you were just saying, works in his advantage because then you have a ton of people being there to tell you, hey, we'll try this. It, this might work this way if you can do it. But yeah, good for him. <laughs> yeah, definitely. I'll also say um, if you're still on the fence, he uh, he has a really, really awesome sense of humor. That's um, It's a very, very technical channel. I bring this up in the interview with him. But uh, it's a very technical channel. He goes into great detail on like individual aspects of how he completes Mario Odyssey without jumping, and and you know, which could be monotonous, done wrong. Right. But uh, he's he's really really good at his uh, his editing and his humor in a way that actually kind of reminded me a bit of a uh, video game donkey. If anybody's uh, okay. <laughs> yeah, and and I brought that up to him, and he and he said, yeah, yeah, I I, I guess that uh, some of my stuff is. Uh, inspired by him so hmm. yeah, i have to check out more of that 
I mean, I guess I'm not sure how long it usually takes him to beat these games, but I just think it'd be fun to see him or maybe another speedrunner pick up one of these challenges at uh, like a games done quick and do like a no jump Mario Odyssey run. Oh my gosh, yeah, that would <laughs> that would be fun. A games done quick. I'm not sure. Um, usually they uh, they're kind of limited on the amount of time that they can allot yeah. to each one of those. So I'm not sure how long that would take. But right. that, man, that would be cool. <laughs> I mean, if you could get it down to, down to like just a couple hours, that'd be reasonable. But oh yeah, oh yeah, yeah, probably not. (laughs) Put it in the suggestions. (laughs) Yeah, I'll just throw that in the comments on all his videos. It's like apply, sign up for games done quick. I'm still just kind of thrown by that trying to beat every video game thing because (laughs) they're they're just like they're too many i'd say too many games that come out on switch every week that yeah are just like well he said you it kind know, of jokingly you yeah, know like every, uh, my girlfriend is a mermaid like yeah that right that, that, that was a fun one last week well, v- visual laps. novels and <laughs> and like well i think for him snooker for him. 2018 <laughs> <laughs> yeah there's there's some real weird ones out there i think for him it's more of an ideal to live up to uh, sure. than an actual uh an actual practice but oh man he's making the best of it he has a lot of consoles as well everything except for all the mainline ones from sony and microsoft and nintendo except for like an original xbox i think maybe an xbox one hmm nice so for these uh game challenges that he does where does he get this inspiration does he just kind of come up with some ridiculous idea and he's like well, let's see if it works or does someone his fans comment or send him messages or anything like that he basically said that his challenge um most of the time he gets his challenges just kind of screwing around in the games and asking himself okay a what would be interesting and b what would work and he also said that he tries to ever for avoid ever using asterisks like uh, i keep on referring back to it but the mario odyssey no jump video right um he says that has a clear and basic premise just beat the game based on the in-game counter. You don't need to add anything onto that. It's simple, it's clean, hmm. um, and basically uh, the game is also recognizing that uh, he completed he completed it with no jumps because of that counter there, which is also kind of satisfying. You know? So wait, did I miss something in Odyssey, or is there is there somewhere that you can actually see easily in the game the number of times you jumped, or is that something you have to look deeper for in that game? So uh, do you know uh, in the Mushroom Kingdom at the end, whenever you run into Toadette, mm-hmm. and she has all those achievements that, uh, okay. that she lists to you, it, basically there is one achievement that says that you have to get, uh, I think it's something like 10,000 jumps or something like that, which is normally <laughs> not a problem at all. Right. But it also shows how many jumps you're currently at, which is very, very helpful for his no jump run. Interesting. I guess that works. <laughs> yeah, it works. It works, even though it's a, it's a little sketchy. <laughs> <laughs> it's almost like Nintendo had this planned. Who knows? Maybe they did. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the other big video that I've seen from him was uh, beating Breath of the Wild without climbing. Yeah, and that was an interesting one uh, because that was probably uh, one of his very first like massive hits. Um, hmm. I believe it's sitting at around 4 million views right now or something like that. Yeah, 3.8 million. Basically, you, you can see it in the video itself. But uh, the biggest challenge of that, beating Breath of the Wild without climbing, was actually just the opening area. <laughs> yeah. Uh, just the Shrine of Awakening. Um, after you get out of there, it's pretty much a cakewalk for the rest of the game. Not necessarily, because uh, you, you got to walk up mountains. But hmm. the, you can walk up mountains in that game, as he makes, a, he makes pretty clear. So... Uh, <laughs> Yeah, that's another really great one. Mm-hmm. Well, yeah, I mean, the whole walking up mountains thing is pretty much how you, the, the best way to do it because then you're not using up all your stamina. Yeah, that's a good point. And he also says that uh, he has a couple challenges down the works as well. Um, okay. And in, in the road, what, one that he mentioned that may or may not come out was completing the original Doom, but with only using your fists. Uh, <laughs> Which he said is difficult because he's not very good at Doom. So. Ah. Yeah, just use cheats. Yeah, there you go. That's it. <laughs> I mean, I feel, 
I guess that makes sense you could do it as long as you're good enough to dodge everything properly. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, yeah, <laughs> I guess I'm not, I'm not, I'm not really sure. I have not attempted it myself, but if anybody is qualified for it, Mr. Game Champ himself, I think he is. Absolutely. Maybe, maybe we'll see as new Nintendo games come out more new Nintendo runs by him that have some crazy rules <laughs> involved like uh, let's see what could we do with Yoshi maybe um, a no throwing eggs run oh gosh oh man <laughs> I didn't even know how that would be possible I'm sure there's some boss where you have to throw eggs to oh I'd them. imagine oh I'd imagine there's probably a bunch of them <laughs> anyway his channel's really interesting we'll leave a, a link to it somewhere uh, somewhere around wherever somewhere in the, the ether podcast. Yeah, somewhere in the ether. Go read the article. We'll also probably leave a link to that, assuming it's up at this time. Uh, it's 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 an interesting interview, and I think uh, I think you'll like it. Yeah, I know I will once I get to reading it. Yeah. <laughs> All right. So where can everyone find you, Ethan? Where do you do your best work? Uh, I'm at Linkachuchu on Twitter. That's L I N K A G U C H U, and I, I I don't know. I mostly just retweet other people's dumb smash brothers jokes um, nice yeah and you can find me on culturegaming.com uh thank you for very much for having me on for this brief segment yeah. thanks for coming on yeah thanks so much all right have a great year yeah you too bye <laughs>